Hi, Yellow Bird friends, it's Miss Pamela here. Welcome back to our YouTube tutorials for our fun art kits. Now, this week's art kit, we're kind of taking a fun ocean theme, and we are going to be working on an ocean sculpture. Now, with our ocean sculpture in your kit, you are going to have an eight inch tray, some plastic straws, pieces of white cardboard, your primary colors of paint, red, blue, and yellow, as well as some white so we can make new colors together. You're also going to be getting a large piece of clay and some kinetic sand slime, as well as some seashells. And your paintbrush for painting, some tacky glue for gluing, and a variety of jewels and buttons to decorate and kind of embellish our sea creatures. Now for this project, you're going to need from home a pair of scissors, some form of tape, and a pencil. So let's go ahead and get started. The very first step is to design the kinds of designs and sea creatures you want for your sculpture. I'll bring mine really nice and close and we can talk about some of the things that I have here, but you don't have to create these. You can create any kind of ocean life that you would like. I have some coral and seaweed. See, I've got some coral reefs, some seaweed. I have little fish, a couple different kinds of fish. Here I have a little jellyfish, a little sea star, and you're going to get to kind of pick and choose what you would like, but I'm going to make a couple of them with you today just to kind of give you some ideas on how it's going to be made. And let's go. So you're going to take your pieces of cardboard. There are going to be some long pieces and some short pieces, different sizes. So I think I'm going to make some fun, tall, colorful kind of seaweed. So I'm going to draw on here. You'll see, you can see the line. I'm going to go ahead and just draw some tall, wavy lines. And once I've got my wavy lines in place, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. Make sure that you have some strong scissors. Small children's scissors may not work so well for this, but luckily this kind of cardboard is pretty thin and easy to cut, so you should be able to handle it. Now our little friends that are like five years old or six years old, if it feels like it's a little too tough for you, just go ahead and ask an older sibling or a parent to help you cut some of these out. So we'll go ahead and cut them out. And I'm only going to cut out a few of them today just so we don't spend so much time on our video and we can move forward and show you the assembly. So we will go ahead and cut out our shape. There we go, do you see? We've got a fun shape there. You can save this because you can use it for other smaller pieces if you want later. And I'm going to take a small piece here and I'm going to draw a simple fish shape. Now for a simple fish shape, I'm going to start by kind of making an X on its tail here. That's what helps me sometimes. You make a little X like that. And then you're simply going to draw a line from the top corner of the X down to the bottom. You see, to close out a little tail. And then I'm gonna create a little bubble in the front of its body. See, just a simple little fish shape. And then I'm gonna cut him out. And you can make your fish shape any way that you want. If you want it to have long, pretty fins, you can make long, pretty fins. If you want it to have a bigger and longer tail, like I said, these are just little examples, but you're welcome to get as fancy as you want with your sea creatures. Okay. So once you have designed all of your sea creatures, let's pretend I've got several made. Here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I was able to fit seven in here. Um, you can make as many as you want and then play around with it and design how you want your sculpture to be. So once you have all of your pieces cut out, then we're gonna work on painting them. Now remember, we have our primary colors, but you can make any new color from these primary colors. So I think that I want my fish to have some blue and purple on it, so I need to make purple. That means that I'm going to take 
some of my red, scoop some out onto my little plate, and then rinse my brush. dry and then I'm going to take some blue add a little bit at a time so it doesn't turn out too dark and then we're going to mix it together now I can tell that that's getting really dark and I don't want a purple that's going to be that dark so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little more red to it and maybe even come in and add a little bit of white to give it more of a fun lavender color see it's a little too much blue that means it's a little too dark so rinse your brush off again and dry it. Remember, always dry your brush really well so your acrylic paints don't get too runny. I'm gonna add a little more red. And the reason we like to give you guys your primary colors is because color mixing is just as fun as art activities that you can do at home. I enjoy color mixing. I like making different kinds of colors. Sometimes I even like to name them and make new fun make-believe names for all of my colors. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little more red, a little more white, and there we go. We're making a nicer purple there. You can see now I've got a nice lighter color that I like. And I'm ready to start painting. So I'm going to bring my fish over and I'm going to go ahead and paint my fish. Now for those of you that have painted with us before, and we've talked about this in other videos, Acrylics are really great because you can layer colors and you can make a lot of fun markings and designs on your pictures or on your creations. So with this purple fish, I'm gonna go ahead and paint its entire body purple now, but then I'm gonna let it sit and dry for a little bit. And then I'm gonna come back in and I wanna give it fun polka dots and designs just because I want him to be a really silly fish. And I can use other colors on top of that which is the nice part about acrylics is that we can definitely layer our colors. So I'm gonna have his tail be a different color. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse now. Dry. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a blue tail. And once again, because we are using acrylics, when you go to start your project, you want to make sure that you're wearing old clothes or a smock or, um, you know, just something that you don't mind getting dirty and something that can protect your table as well. So we've got our little fish started there. And now I'm going to come over and I'm going to do some fun colors here. I'm going to start with some yellow. And I want to put a couple different colors on here. So I'm going to just do some stripes that are kind of coming down. We wanted to do an ocean theme as our last kind of video before we start our summer camps because we thought it would be fun to kind of get us inspired for summer being right around the corner. I'm sure a lot of you are enjoying some of this outside weather that's coming along that's really nice and fun to get outside and splash around and get wet. Okay, so now I'm going to make some green. So I'm going to take some blue, just a little bit of blue. These darker colors are really strong, very pigmented, so we want to make sure that we don't do too much of it and a little more yellow. Now we're gonna mix it up, make a nice fun green. Here we go. Now I have some green. I'm gonna go in and add some green lines as well. And like I said, you can do any fun color combination that you want. The only little suggestion that I make, just a little reminder for all of our friends, is that when you are painting with your primary colors, you want to try to make sure that you don't mix all of your primary colors together on top of one another. Because if they mix on top of one another and you take your red, your blue, and your yellow, and you don't let this paint dry in between your layers. If you mix it all together, you're just gonna get this really dark murky brown because they just kind of all just make brown together. You see? So I've got my fun little seaweed. I have a fun little fish. I think I'm gonna go in now 
It's not completely dry. I would let it dry a little bit longer if I was home. And plus you'll be making a lot of other sea creatures so you'll have time. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do some fun little dots on his body. Now you can choose to paint an eye on if you would like, or you'll be able to also use the buttons and the jewels that we include in your kit and glue them on as well. So it's up to you, the kind of design that you want to have. Paint there. And then I think I wanna add a little bit of white to his tail, some fun little white stripes. There we go, we have our fun little colorful fish. So once you have painted all of your sea creatures, your seaweed, coral reef, anything that you wanna make for your sculpture, you'll have all of your pieces out and you're going to let them dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and move all the paints and everything out of the way. I'm gonna keep my brush, wash it off really well and dry it really well because you're going to be using this brush with your glue in just a moment. So we have our sea creatures, we have all of our buttons and our jewels, we have our glue and our brush tape nearby, it can be any kind of tape. And then you're going to get your base. In the center of your base, you're going to take your piece of clay. You're gonna flatten it a little bit and kind of make it kind of like a round shape, but it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Try not to make it too thin when you flatten it out because you wanna be able to have enough thickness to stick your straws into that will hold them. So you'll go ahead and take your clay and you're gonna lay it in the center of your tray. Once you have your clay there, then you're going to take your sand slime. It's really sticky, but it's fun. You can always play with it on a tray for a little while before you choose to use it because playing with it is really fun too. And then you're gonna take this and it's gonna go around the outside of your clay. And if you have to break it off into little pieces and place it in here, if it works better for you that way, then that's wonderful. But it's just to give a little bit of support around the clay and an area to be able to put your seashells into. So you see, it almost looks like a little island in the center. So the clay is where you're going to be poking in all of your straws to hold all of your creatures upright. You don't wanna poke them into the sand slime because it's still too wet and it's gonna fall over and not hold very well. But the clay is what you're going to use. So the next step is going to be all of your straws, you can cut them into different sizes, different heights and different lengths, depending on how you want to design your sculpture. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a slightly shorter straw for this one, since I know this is going to be really tall already. Take a piece of tape. And along the back of the cardboard, you're going to tape on your straw. So you'll have your straw, and just kind of tape it in place, you see? And then you can poke it into your clay. Okay, I'm gonna actually put it a little bit lower I want to see this kind of touching the ground there. Now, if you have any coral reef or any seaweed that you want really far down into the ground, you can actually poke it into the sand a little bit um, and maybe up against the clay and it should hold upright for you. But the rest of them, you can go ahead and use your straws. So I'm gonna go ahead. And before I put the fish on, on the straw, I actually wanna go ahead and glue on its eye. So I'm gonna use a little bit of tacky glue, put the little dot on, and then I'm going to use a jewel. I'm gonna use a jewel. Okay, we'll put a little jewel on for its eye. You wanna go ahead and let this dry a little bit before you attach it to the straw um, and before you place it on here, just so the eye doesn't slide down off of its face. Same as for the other shapes. If you decide to glue colorful buttons or colorful jewels onto the other pieces of your sculpture. Please let it sit for a little while, let it dry. Once everything is dry, then that's when you're gonna start assembling. I'm just kind of moving forward today just so we don't have to wait so long. So I'm gonna take my little fish and I'm gonna take my straw. Once again, you're gonna take some tape. You're gonna put it along the back of the fish. It on. 
see. And this one has a little bit of a stretchy straw, kind of bendy straw, so you can choose to move that around as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and stick him into the clay right here, and he's going to kind of be moving around. Once you have gotten all of your different shapes and sea creatures on your clay and you've decided exactly how you want to have your layout, kind of like I did right here, you've got all the buttons in place, all of the jewels in place, You've come back and you've painted fun markings and designs all over your pieces. Once all of those things are done, once they're all dry and you have poked them all into your clay and have found fun places for them. Now, some of them are gonna have to be short. Some of them can be really tall. That's why you're gonna have a variety of straws so you can pick and choose how you want to set them up. And then once you've got them all in place, then you're gonna get your seashells and start filling in the space around the base and just kind of set up some shells and push them into the sand really well. Just kind of push them in and you can go all the way around, filling your entire tray. Just put as many fun shells as you want. If you want some of them kind of sticking up like that, you can put some of them sticking up and just continue to fill the base and make it as um, decorated as, as you want. Once you have finished putting all of your shells on, then you've got to let it sit overnight for the um, sand clay to harden. It might take a day or two for it to completely harden, but you can actually just set it up in your room somewhere, maybe on your desk or on a fun counter inside of your house where you want to kind of show off your ocean sculpture. But once it's completed, you can see how all the shells even the ones that are sticking straight up will hold in place nice and tight. All of your sea creatures will be here for you to enjoy and look at, and you'll have a beautiful, beautiful, nice and colorful, fun ocean sculpture to show off at home with your friends and your family. So thank you for watching me today. I hope you guys have lots of fun doing this project, and hopefully we'll get to see you guys back at the studio soon. Have a great day. Bye.